Pose and Gloves here and this is another video in the DSP Basics series and today I have a whiteboard to help me demonstrate some principles without math potentially. Today we're going to be talking about phase modulation and how it does its job. I'm going to do it with no math, no equations or anything. I'm going to be referencing equations but the end goal of this is to give you more of a concrete idea of what's going on when we talk about phase modulation and what that means. And so first we need, we've talked about phase before, but to make it clear, let's say we have a signal. So we have a signal and here is our, our zero amplitude. And so it goes down to negative one and up to one and we have zero and it's going across time. So we have it going across time and we can change the phase of our signal by where it starts at. So we could have a signal start in various places. So we could have it start at the zero value. So if this was like so, we could have it start at zero or we could have it start at like, so we could have it start up here or here or here or here um, or here. As you can see, we can have it just start all these different places. It's called phase. But you have to remember, because what frequency modulation is, is a type of phase modulation. And this was only possible when digital technology came around. It's because it's a digital signal processing. Why was that? Well, because we're dealing with discrete information. We're dealing with samples, segments of this waveform. And each, if you start at a different segment, it will start at a different phase. Now, this phase represents... Uh, so this is our amplitude, right? And so we have our amplitude going up and down. And when you have a, a waveform moving, so we have air being right here, and then when it moves forward and backwards, it's compressing and refracting. And the extent to which this happens is graphed by how high or low this uh, our graph goes, okay? And so if we were to change the starting point of that refraction, we're changing the phase. But in digital land, this is recorded as like a bit, right? We talked about that in the sample, um, the sample video. It's like the first one, the, the one that's labeled the first one in this series. And so when we're changing, so that means that each discrete signal for doing 44,100 samples a second has an associated time signature. So our time is associated with each sample. So, uh, so by manipulating the phase data in relationship with the time, we can change the slope of this to make it steeper. We can make it uh, more curvy. We could concave it. We can do all these interesting things to our signal now. And we call it phase modulation. Hopefully you get a better idea of what that means. So let me say it one more time in a little more clear manner. Um, now that we've kind of covered that, hopefully you have some sort of idea going in your head. So, So we have a signal, and it looks like this. And let's say that we've sampled it at 44,100 times a second. We're going to break it down simple. I'm just going to draw a bunch of lines that's going to represent our samples. So That'll do for now. So we have our samples, and each one of these samples is associated with time. Well, each one of these samples also has an associated bit depth. So this particular bit depth at this particular moment in time represents the, our phase, which is what I was talking about, the whole amplitude thing earlier. I'll have to do one about the physics of sound, I guess, to really make this clear. But it's got this associated bit depth with this moment of time. So this moment of time has that bit depth. And this moment of time has this bit depth. And uh, if you haven't watched the bit depth one, go watch the bit depth DSP video. But if we were to start at this bit depth as opposed to this one, according to our moment of time, if we were to just shift this down over here, we would start at a different phase. And the same way, uh, so you can see how we could easily write an equation that rather than shifting the time, we could shift the phase. So we could say, go down here, move this point up here, so we get a line that looks like this instead, and then goes down. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you've got an idea of what phase is. It's quite easy to write an equation 
about how to interpret time with these data points. And now you understand why it can only be done digitally. See, they had real problems with analog because this signal fluctuates so much because of the different parts. It was a, it's because it's a continuous signal. You can't break it down and write so simple a math equation. And that's why it has to be done doing phase modulation. Now, when we get into frequency modulation, it gets a little more complicated because we're dealing with pitch and there's this overtone theory and stuff. It gets much more complicated. But I just wanted to make this to kind of show you Next time you're touching phase modulation, you know what you're touching. If you have no idea what this is or even what it sounds like, um, it sounds like frequency modulation, go check out my uh, Massive From The Ground Up series. I have a video specifically for phase modulation, I believe. It'll be somewhere in the modulation tab section. And you can watch that one video if, if you're not curious about learning about Massive or maybe you don't own it, but it'd be a good resource. So that's that. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Maybe any ways you like to explain things without getting into really technical terms uh, let me know if you understood this um, or if you didn't or if you're still lost but the deal is you have to watch my previous videos and understood them um, granted those should be understandable too before you say you didn't understand this one um, and yeah subscribe uh, check out my music on composinggloves.com and have a blessed day